That's good. Thank you. All right. Well, come on, Jamie. Come on up here. Jamie Ragel is going to be our guest this morning, and he's going to speak. And uh, so let's give him a nice round of applause. Wow, it's great to have him. Hey, I'll get this, y'all. <laughs> hey, friend. You got your mic? I got my mic. And you got your wife. I got Stephanie. my wife, Stephanie, she down Stephanie, here. Stephanie, stand up. Come on. She's down here in the non-smoking area. Jamie Ragel. It's Thanks, nice Pat. to have you, buddy. Thank I love you. Pastor. It. Always Good love having you. Isn't he great? Hey, everybody. Good morning. You know, these are challenging and uncertain times. I was listening to a man the other day. He's talking. He's talking about the freedoms that we're losing and talking about the challenges that we're all facing. And in the process, I begin to think of something that I heard maybe 10 years ago. Listen to this. If you own, if you own a car, you are among the 10% of the wealthiest people in the whole world if you own a car. If you own a home, you are among the 5% of the wealthiest people in all the world. And even in these days of uncertainty, here's what I believe. We might focus so much on what we think we're losing and forget what we have. God is a good God. Aren't you glad to be here? Aren't you glad? You know, most of us, most of us slept in a bed last night. A lot of people in the world didn't. We had a roof over our head. We had food on our table. Unless you're on keto and then... <laughs> Don't you love to go out with people who look at the menu and go, I'm just having salad. What are you just having? Page one. Anybody here, anybody here getting older? Does anybody think different now? Does anybody go to the restaurant and just take packets of stuff you don't need in case you might later on? Yeah, Stephanie and I, we take showers together, and it's not because we're trying to be amorous. We're saving water. But she's under the spigot. My back's against the wall. I'm catching the mist off the top of her head like a vegetable in the produce department at Kroger's, uh, trying to get a little water. I'm afraid that sometimes in the process of looking around, listen, I'm not downplaying. This is a time of challenge. It's a time of struggle. It's a time of uncertainty for many, many people. But I want to speak this morning on the certainty of uncertainty. And if you have your Bible, I want to point your attention to our text this morning. It's found in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 29. Now, let me begin by saying this. We often approach this verse. Well, <laughs> it's supposed to be there. We often approach this verse. Is that the back of my head? Man. You know, somebody told me, you've lost a lot of weight. Guess what? There's a whole lot more to go. I'm losing hair. Oh, we've got to change that. I'm going to preach with a hat. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Now watch this. A lot of people look at that as a security blanket. God has a plan for me, and that's good. The suffering that I'm going through is going to be over. But that's not what God was promising the Israelites, and it's not what he's promising us either. L let me show you something. <clears throat> the heart of this verse... It's not that we would escape our lot, that we would have uh, the ability to learn and survive in the midst of it all. If you have your pencil, you ought to write this down. God is certain even when we're not. 
God is not controlled by the climate of our culture. God knows what's going on. I don't know if anybody's ever heard this before, but has it ever occurred to you that it never occurred to God? God's not, God's not in heaven saying, oh, I didn't know that. Debbie, God's not saying, I didn't know you were going to get cancer. Brother Harry, wherever you're at, God never told you or I, you're going to bury your child. God never told you, Wes, ahead of time that you'd walk through this valley. And we all walk through those challenges. We all, but here's the problem. Sometimes we're looking at all the things we think we're losing, and we forget what we have. We have a great God who loves us. We have a God that's touched by the feelings of our infirmities. You know, a lot of people put all their eggs in the basket of looks. People tell me I look much younger than I am. Well, they lied to you. So you look like a pillowcase full of doorknobs. Somebody has lied to you. And when are you going to give it up? It's like my daughter's a hairdresser, and she's, this lady has given her what for? Well, I, <laughs> she brings in a picture of Kate Beckinsale. This woman looks like Ernest Borgnine from McHale's Navy. Donna, I'm telling you, she looks at my daughter, and she's mad at my I want to look like this, and I'm thinking it's a, it's a comb. It's not a wand. We can't do magic. You, <laughs> these, that was funny. I don't care what you say. Uh, Here's what a lot of people don't realize, that the Israelites were in exile because of their disobedience. And Jeremiah confronts the false prophet Hananiah who told them that God was going to free Israel from Babylon in two years. Well, here's a spoiler alert. God doesn't do that. God didn't do that. God does have a good plan for the Israelites. It's a good plan. He's going to give them prosperity. He's going to give them a future. Doesn't that sound great? Watch this. The thing is, before he shares this promise to give them hope for the future, can I? how many of you know what a context is? Now, this is not, Tom, this is not on our notes. Mike, this is not on our notes. But here's what God says. <clears throat> uh, and by the way, it's something they didn't want to hear. Look at verse 7 of Jeremiah chapter 29. Well, actually, look at verse 4. This is what the Lord of heaven's armies, the God of Israel, says to all the captives he has called to Babylon from Jerusalem. Look, look at what he says. Build homes, plan to stay, plant gardens, eat the food they produce, marry and have children, find spouses, have grandchildren, multiply, don't dwindle away, <clears throat> and work for the peace and prosperity of the city that I sent you into exile. God says, hey, listen, I'm going to deliver you, but guess what? It's not going to be on your time. Matter of fact, I want you to build houses. I want you to have kids. It brings me to this thought. Look at verse 10, and I think this is one of our slides. For thus saith the Lord, after 70 years is accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word toward you in causing you to return to this place. You know, ladies and gentlemen, a lot of us want to believe that whatever we're going through is going to be over just like, well, I prayed and God didn't deliver me. Well, that doesn't mean God's not going to deliver you. But it does mean it may not happen in your time. As a matter of fact, what we just read, the context, verse 10, God says, listen, 70 years, there's a lot of people that are not going to see this deliverance. God says, I want you to get married. I want you to have kids. I want you to have grandkids. I want you to build houses. But we expect God to answer our prayer immediately on our time and on our schedule. But, folks, God doesn't do that. How many of you believe God's smarter than we are? Well, he really is. He's God. You know, I, I, I look at this passage and I was thinking, God this is the second point of the message. God is working all things for our good ultimately. 
The challenge for us is a realization that his timing may be very different from ours. I want you to put up this slide. People talk about tomorrow. Tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. Tomorrow is a time found only on a fool's clock. How many of you know that you'll be here tomorrow? How many of you are 100% sure that you'll be here tomorrow? How many of you know that you know? How many of us have heard? I, I had a friend I went to high school with, and I mean, out of nowhere. And I used to go to his home. They lived in Norwood. I met some folks today that live in Norwood. And they lived in Norwood. They lived on Drex Avenue. And they were friends of ours, and we went to church together. And uh, I, I went to their home, and, and he had a beautiful home and a wonderful dad and mom. And, man, out of nowhere, her, his mother was killed right out here on Route 4, right off of 275, head-on car accident, life taken away. Listen, none of us who are here, and we all remember September 11th. I'm telling you, folks, those people that went into that tower, they didn't know they were not coming home. You can't say you have till tomorrow. You got your pencil? Write this down. Delayed obedience is disobedience. God wants you to do something. He wants you to do it when he asks you to do it. We talked about this the other day, Steph. You know, people talk about what they're going to do, and here's what I'm going to plan, and here's what I'm going to give. And, folks, there's, there's nothing wrong with preparing financially for your future. But how much are you going to take with you? There's no honor in being the richest man in the cemetery. You know what? Think about all this and, and think about all these things. And I've got all this and you're going to leave it all behind. The only thing that matters is what you've done with God. Folks, I have never, and I don't know whether it's age, Matt. I really don't know whether it's age. I think it is. God has seared a word in my heart, Brother Link that I have not been able to walk away. I can't get away from this word, and the word is eternity. I wear it on my wrist. Eternity is a long time to be wrong. It's a long time to be wrong. Well, I'm pretty sure that I'm saved. I'm pretty sure that I'm going to heaven. I'm pretty sure. And I think we missed point number three. We might have put it in there. But I, but I want you to see, today is the day. This moment is the moment. Tomorrow may never come. Here's what I am certain of. Eternity, it's before all of us. Jesus may come today. Somebody asked me the other day, and I saw my friend Lonnie's little girls here today. You all look so beautiful, and I just wonder where the time's gone. I just wonder where it's all gone. You're here for a moment, and you're gone. I, I don't know but you. I bend over to pick up something. And what I do is I look around to see, is there anything else I need to do while I'm down here? You know, Stephanie's 11 years younger than I am. I get out of the bed in the middle of the night. Anybody have to get up in the night and go to the restroom? I get up, go to the restroom, I come back, she's got the bed made. Hey, it's 520. You ready to go? Where? To the morgue? 520. <laughs> 9 o'clock, I'm in the bed. 10 o'clock. Does anybody else feel that? What happened? 10 o'clock. I don't know. You want to stay up for the news? Yeah, let's walk the line and live on the ragged edge and Stay up till the 10 o'clock news, not the 11 o'clock news. Is Al Shadokati still on? Who remembers Al Shadokati? Who remembers <laughs> Uncle Al and Captain Wendy? Who remembers the cool ghoul? <laughs> That's a different world. It was a fun world. It wasn't. Wow. Oh, I heard somebody singing. The, oh, see, I can't hide it. 
I just can't. You know, Pastor, several people have been asking me to sing. Who are they? Where are those people at? Well, I sing for his glory. You can do that in a parking lot. We, we have a parking lot service. You can sing out there. If it's for his glory, it doesn't matter whether I hear it or not, right? <laughs> you know, a gentleman told me this morning back at the table, he says, you know, you just say what everybody else feels. Well, if you're going to get charged for it, why not go ahead and say it? <laughs> Dr. Rawlings, you say that all the time. Well, here's the thing. If you think it, you're going to get charged for it. Just, well, go ahead and say it. But life is a vapor. We're here for a while, and then we're gone. God tells these people, I'm going to do And here's the biggest blow of all. God does have a plan for us. <clears throat> God knows what we're experiencing. God knows that you and I maybe are scared. Some of us are scared. You know, your body, you might think different. See, that's one of the challenges of getting older. You're still young up here, but you're old everywhere else. Old age, old age creeps up on us. You know, I heard somebody say the other day, says, ah, just something about him I don't like. Something about her I don't like. And I thought, that's the most immature do you realize how immature that statement is? I'm not going to take time to find out about this person. I'm not going to take time to invest any effort or energy in getting to know them. I'm just going to make a, a, a decision. I don't like them. You know, life is, how many of you believe life is short? Whew, it's a vapor. It's gone. Is that how you want to spend your life? Mad, angry, living in fear. Uh, I, uh, I believe that um, my dad is 85 years old, and I believe that yesterday was one of the most poignant conversations I've ever had with my dad. My dad's telling me, he says, son, I want to talk to you about what <clears throat> I want you to sing at my funeral. And I'm thinking, Dad, if you think for one minute I can sing at your funeral... How do you sing at your dad's funeral? If I do, it'd be God's grace. If I did, it'd, it'd be the hardest thing in the world. But none of us want to face that, folks. Tomorrow's not promised to us. But what is promised? What I am certain of is God has our best interest at heart. And there, there is a deliverance coming. There is a hope for the future. But it just may not be when we want it to be. I always look at, Donna, are you going to play this morning? Will you play? We always look at one another and think, uh, may, I'll see you next time. I, I saw Brother Tea Garden. Anybody remember Homer, the Tea Garden? <clears throat> and I was telling Barry this morning, I said, your dad's a friend of mine. I loved Homer. And then... Matter of fact, Brother Wagers told me this morning, he said, you know, I lost my wife. You were married 61, 60 years, and I didn't know you'd lost your wife. Well, you didn't lose her. We know where she's at. I'm sorry, you just, though, when you're, when you're without someone you've walked with for 60 years, Life's different. Aren't you glad we have a hope of a better resurrection? Aren't you thankful? Well, you know, <laughs> you go to the grocery now and they, they keep your change. We're running out of change. We might be running out of change, but we're not running out of hope. God's going to level the playing field. God's got it all figured out. Boy, I hope this candidate wins. I hope this person becomes our president. Boy, I hope. Folks, if, you're, if you are believing for one moment that Donald Trump or Joe Biden is going to change the course of this world, you have lost your ever-loving mind. We're so far beyond that. 
We need God in America. We need God in our world. That's what I'm certain of. We need to fall on our face and ask God to forgive us. I wear it all the time now. You've heard me say you're only one choice away from a different life. You've heard me say that. Boy, I've, <clears throat> this year, Matt, <clears throat> listen to this, Matt. <clears throat> I wrote Matt yesterday, and he wrote me. And I said, I, I cherish these moments we have. I really do, Joy. We've known each other for a long time. But one day we might get a call. Listen to this. <clears throat> At some point in your childhood, you and your friends went out to play for the very last time and nobody knew it. You didn't know that would be the very last time you'd go out and play with your friends. Didn't know that. Listen to this. If you don't let God heal the hurt in your life, you'll bleed on the people who didn't cut you. Hurting people hurt people. The reason you're sour and the reason you're bitter. I told Donna, I said this morning, I said, so glad you're here. Donna, I love to hear you. And where have the years gone? Folks, if you don't know that you're saved, what are you waiting for? Please hear this. I have the heart of an evangelist who grieves. I have a little part-time job now. And I'm, I'm grateful for it. But it grieves my heart to be going to a little part-time job on a Sunday morning when I'm thinking, I ought to be preaching, man. But you know what? Maybe God has something for me right there at that little place. Maybe God has one person there he wants me to share my story with or share a message with. <clears throat> But I want to ask you this. If you look at your life, I go to bed at night. God, I want to make sure all the I's are dotted and all the T's are crossed. Here's my question. <clears throat> Do you know that 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 you know? I don't ever look down here and, and, and not look for J.D. I, I I don't, I don't ever look at it, and he's gone. He went to an amusement park. Anybody, anybody remember Big J.D.? Went to an amusement park. He was at the amusement Did he die at the amusement park? I remember years ago in this city, for him and Point of Grace were having a concert. And I believe in between shows, there was a man that fell from the second story, balcony area, fell to his death in, in between the two shows. And, and do you know what the doctors, I think, said? He's dead before he hit the ground. He had something called a diffusional aneurysm. He was blood rushed. He, he died before he hit the ground. Folks, you could die this moment. Do you know that you're saved? And here's why I ask you. Because eternity is a long time to be wrong. People in hell don't have one chance of being saved. Now, I know it went just a little long, but I want to get this in. Here's the next thing that's going to happen according to God's time schedule. Very soon, the rapture of the church. We who are alive and remain will be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. During that time, there will be a period of tribulation, the emergence of the Antichrist, Three and a half years of pre peace and prosperity. Three and a half years of hell on earth. It will all consummate with a battle called the Battle of Armageddon. The Bible says blood will flow to the bridles of the horses. Why would you want to be left? And folks, don't have time to teach you a prophecy lesson this morning. But those of you who are here today who have heard the message of hope and faith, who have had a chance to be saved, We'll have no chance to be saved during the tribulation. None. It will take no faith 
to believe in God once the rapture occurs, and you can't be saved without faith. Do you know for sure that you're going to heaven? You've probably heard me say this. I know you have. I'd rather be saved twice than lost once. I'd rather know that I know because eternity, it's a long time to be wrong. Will you bow your head with me? Is there anybody here today? I don't want anybody to look. Pastor's going to come, but is there anybody here today just hold up your hand and say, Jamie, I don't know that I'm going to heaven. Tired of living in fear, tired of living in doubt, this age of uncertainty, I want to be sure of that. Is there anybody here today who would just hold up your hand and say, Jamie, I'm not 100% sure that I'm going to heaven, but would you pray for me? God bless you, sir, and God bless you, ma'am. Hold your hand up really high so I can see it real high. How many others? Just up and down. How many of you say, Jamie, I heard the message and I'm thankful that I'm saved, but I really needed what I heard today. There's more I could do. There's more I should do. I know in these days my faith should be stronger. My testimony ought to be greater. I ought to be living closer to the Lord than I am. How many of you would hold up your hand and say, I am sure of that? Take your hand. <clears throat> High as you can. Hold it up. All over the building. God bless you, friends. You know, would everybody just look this way for a minute? I, I don't know how we're doing this now. I still like to come around the altar. You wear your mask, you can stay distanced. But I, I, I want to ask you today, if, if today you would just like to make a decision to say, Lord, I'm not sure that I'm saved, but I want to settle it. Or you're that person who says, Jamie, I am saved. I know that I'm going to heaven. But I needed what I heard today. And I don't want to look around and think I've got tomorrow because that's a time found only on the clock of a fool. I may not have tomorrow. Can we all stand? <clears throat> and I want to open the altar. And you come. Don't wait. Just come and stand. And You don't have to kneel. Just come and pray as we sing. He's all I need. He's all I need. Sing. All I need. Will you come? He was crucified for me. is all I need. <clears throat> Before Matt sings that last little phrase, if you were to know that today would be your last opportunity to do something that you ought to do, maybe it's say you're sorry. Maybe it's to go to someone and say, Lord, there's, there's been too much distance and too much tension for too long. Let's get this straight. Or, you know what, I've got, I don't know if you've ever heard this saying, I've got money that's gone to sleep. you got money in account, and that use, and you got a neighbor that's lost her husband and she's struggling to get by. You're not taking it with you. Don't wait till tomorrow. My dad's 85 years old. Wes, I said, you're going to be 85 in just a few months. Dad told me yesterday, he says, well, I'm just slowing down, son. Well, guess what? You're 85, Dad. You're going to slow down when you're 85. I got news for you. You're going to slow down long before that. Would you like to just come and say, Lord, I want to make sure all my I's are dotted, all my T's are crossed. God, I want to come and say, Lord, no matter how much time I have left, I just want to be what you want me to be. Let's sing that one more time. He's all I need. Take a big breath. Christ is all I need. Sing with us.
If you believe that, sing. He was crucified for me. He died. Christ is all I need. Christ is all. Thank you, Jamie. That was a great message. Thank you so much. Father, thank you uh, for the wonderful message we've heard this morning. It's uh, enlightened us, and it helped us to focus on the things that we need to focus on, you. Uh, thank you for your power, your living power that's within in us. Uh, I pray as Jamie continues uh, to preach in other cities uh, that you allow him to, uh, thank you for his uh, giftedness and Thank you for his wife, and I pray you'd bless them and protect them. And uh, we pray as we go into the next service here in uh, a few moments, uh, once again, uh, we'll have people come to know you as Savior. So thank you for allowing us to hear this tremendous message this morning in Christ, I pray. Amen. Thank you, Jamie. Uh, he's on his way back to the table. Before you leave, just a couple of things. And... Uh, He'll be at the back table, so stop by and see him. He's got some CDs back there and some uh, DVDs of his messages, and I know you'll enjoy them. Uh, but Tuesday morning at 10 in the parking lot, we're having Legacy. Uh, Lynn's going to sing a couple songs. Our newest staff man, Casey Reagan, uh, is going to uh, bring a message, and we're going to have a box lunch. Uh, so that's outside, 10 o'clock, all right, out on the parking lot. It's supposed to be 70 one degrees at 10 o'clock and no clouds. So it's going to be beautiful. Hey, the Lord spared us today from the rain, I think. I'm not outside yet, but I think so. And then Tuesday night, single young adult college right here at 7 o'clock. We're going to have music. Uh, Scotty Sims, Monica are going to be uh, bringing the worship. And then Michael Tucker is going to bring a message. And then we're going to have some, it'll be a nice time. All right, 7 o'clock. See you. Have a great week. Be careful going out. Don't hit the stage. Bye. God bless you.